Sharing that Credit Suisse is tightening some of those hedge fund limits amid the Archegos fallout. We are lucky that we have the reporter on the story, Eric Schatzker, with us. And Eric, it sort of seems like, yes, this should be the appropriate response. Am I right? Well, let's walk through what's happening very quickly. Credit Suisse is the bank that lost the most, right, in the Archegos blow up, $4.7 billion. We found that out just yesterday. They dumped a number of senior executives, including the head of the investment bank and the head of risk. But it was clear that more was to come. And this is the first step of what's to come. Credit Suisse is tightening the financing requirements for family offices and hedge funds that use swap agreements. I'm not going to get into the details too much because it is a little weedy, but they're going to what's <laughs> called dynamic margining from static margining. And the net result of that is the family offices and hedge funds that use swap agreements instead of standard prime brokerage agreements may find themselves posting more collateral to take positions. And as those positions evolve in terms of their underlying risk, concentration, and volatility, and the trades that they undertake may end up being less profitable. Mm -hmm. Eric, you say it's the first step. How are the hedge funds, the family offices, reacting to this? Is it something that they saw coming? Is it something that they see is going to be more painful, going to be an issue for customer loyalty over Credit Suisse? Caroline, they're absolutely delighted. Of course they're not. This is, a t this is terrible <laughs> news for a multi-strategy hedge fund or a quant shop that uses swaps to gain leverage. Now, the big difference, I should add, between these multi-strat funds or the quant swaps, shops, excuse me, is that their portfolios are nowhere near as concentrated as Bill Wong's was at Archegos. But nonetheless, they're now paying the price because of the loss at Credit Suisse, the loss at Nomura, the loss at Mitsubishi, UFJ. You know there's going to be pushback, but when the board at Credit Suisse, we have to assume this comes yeah. from the board level, is saying to management, you must do this, there is no alternative. Of course, those Hedge funds and family offices might go to another dealer, but they might find that industry standards, it's standards, excuse me, are yeah. tightening up across the industry. Well, Eric, so that's nowhere where, to hide. Well, Eric, that's where I want to go next here, because, I mean, obviously, there, and you, if you sort of run into this limit at, at Credit Suisse, you just find another broker who will deal with you. Is this really going to be the trend now? Do you think that there will be enough, at least of the legit brokers out there, who will now sort of follow these new standards? It's quite possible, Romain, yeah. that Credit Suisse will lose some business, will lose some market share as mm -hmm. a result of this. But everybody can see what the cost of inappropriate margin requirements is. In Credit Suisse's case, it's $4.7 billion. And so I would say that, yes, we're probably going to see the street move more toward these dynamic margining requirements for swap agreements. So it's going to affect everybody. And even if you do want to shop around and find somebody else who will take your business, you might encounter similar restrictions. Yeah. That said, the very large the very large hedge funds, mm -hmm. they're, they're usually larger than the family offices. Archegos got to an unusual size already do business with all of the major banks across the street. And typically, they get as much leverage as they can. And so they can't really shop around. There isn't more leverage to be had necessarily yeah, from point. Goldman Sachs or from Deutsche Bank. Yeah. Am I too optimistic in thinking that this is the industry doing the correct job in self-regulating where then the Dodd-Frank, the D.C. legislators don't need to come in because this is the industry self-correcting to avoid Sure, there's an aspect of that. But as a Canadian, I would say it's kind of like, <laughs> you know, sleeping outdoors in your underwear, getting hypothermia, and then realizing that this time you need to put on a Canada goose. Right. All right. All right.